Hello and welcome to Painless Universal, a conversation with myself and Welsh. Today I'll be talking to Amber. Amber is a personal trainer and a dancer. In everything, with everything going on, we want to understand how dancers and personal trainers are dealing with this whole quarantine. There is currently a lockdown in England and we need to understand what are they doing strategically to to adapt to change and how can they advise us you know we're at home wherever we might be to still get ourselves moving and also to eat right what are the best things to do to be, stay healthy eat better while we're staying in while we're in lockdown our conversation my conversation with amber is all about being in lockdown what do you do how do you stay fit and most important, importantly, how do you stay happy along the way? Meet Amber. So hello everyone and welcome again to Painless Universal, a conversation with myself and Welsh. We have the amazing Amber here with me. You know, we're in lockdown in the UK. If you don't know, we are currently in lockdown. We don't know how long this will last, but Amber here, who's, who's been a, who's a dancer, who's a fitness um, trainer, she's so many things, will be telling us a little bit about how do we cope with lockdown? Amber, how are you? Yeah, I'm very well, thank you. Very well, yeah. Trying to keep as busy as possible in this in this lockdown, as you're saying. So yeah, I'm, I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. I did actually wake up this morning a bit like, oh gosh, like feeling a little bit sad about it. But then I was like, how on earth am I going to chat about positivity this morning? But I got up, sorted myself out, went out for a little cycle, did a workout, and now I feel so much better. So just trying to practice what I preach I suppose I guess so and yeah actually, I think it's not just you everyone goes through that moment um I was mm. practically the same I woke up um this morning and I thought to myself oh gosh I'm a I'm a painless person and then all of a sudden I can't <laughs> um, speak to anyone because I'm not feeling that process of I'm feeling pain rather than feeling painless but like mm -hmm. you know, I did my workout and saw the kids this morning I just felt absolutely happy because they were happy in themselves and I'm like if they are happy, happy why yeah. can't I be happy? So I was like, yeah, might as well. You know, exactly. I, you know, to get into that conversation before we even start, you such an. Um, I read through your page on Instagram, and then you have this mm -hmm. link tree, which gives a lot of things you've done. Could you just tell us a little bit about who is Amber? Yeah, of course. Um, so I originally trained as a professional dancer. I have a degree in dance and musical theatre. So that's sort of where it all started for me. I was away for a whole year last year working in the Caribbean, which was absolutely amazing. Um, and that was, I only graduated about two years ago now. So it was all kind of quite new for me. I'm still 24, so I'm quite young. Um, and then obviously I was back from the Caribbean in December last year and then lockdown sort of hit pretty soon after that. So I was back in London, moved back to London for three months, lockdown hit and I was like, oh, obviously the arts world kind of yeah. completely shut down and it's one of the most affected industries at the moment. Um, so I sort of had to think and sort of readjust a little bit and I went through when I was training and when I was at university I went through some quite tough times with sort of physical and mental health in an environment that's very pressurized with body image and always being your best self every day all day and I turned to fitness to try and help myself through that and that's where the sort of passion came from so once lockdown hit I sort of had to readjust as I said and I then ended up training to be a personal trainer and a fitness instructor and then at the end of lockdown I started sort of getting getting some stuff together started writing some blogs started getting getting get my act together change having a little career pivot and from there I've become the sort of blogger personal trainer that I am today so wow. that's kind of the story in a very quick few minutes 
amazing because you did touch on a lot, especially key issues for me that really matters, especially at university. You said um, there were there's those issues of the body issues. Mm -hmm. These are things we don't really talk about much. Um, the body pain, the pain of mm. like, uh, people wanting things to be perfect, but it's not exactly perfect. Exactly. When you get down to fitness. So how do you do deal with that? Because a lot of people at university are going through that right now. You know, before we can get into yeah. what we actually do, but how did you tackle that bit? For anyone listening, young girls. Out yeah, there? that was that was a really a really tough time in my life actually, and because we were sort of training almost to be athletes there was that pressure of always being at the top of your game and there was a always a kind of atmosphere that that created a pressure on you to to look a certain way to deal with that again like I said I, I really looked to fitness and I sort of found escaping for that hour or so in the gym really gave me that time to focus on myself and sort of showed to me that I could do it myself without someone else telling me if it was good enough or if it wasn't good enough. And I really loved that time to myself with my headphones on, that, that hour that was just purely for me and my own mental health as well as my physical health, which was more what it was about for me at the time. And I really focused in on, on that and tried to sort of changed my mindset a little bit and since graduating having the the time to be able to do that more being out of that environment has certainly certainly helped um with my own self-esteem with my body so yeah it's taken that little time out to have some check-ins and sort of reassess what is real and what isn't real and what's important to you when someone else's opinion of you isn't necessarily what is true for you um so I think definitely taking some moments out and having some time to myself really helped me, yeah. helped me through that. That's really um, amazing. <laughs> I think so many youngsters right now are under that pressure. You know, we have so mm. much social media influence. I remember some um, yes. when the pandemic hit, I actually had to turn off the news because that yes. me, the news is on it, negative pressure because it mm. keeps in giving you information. Sometimes at, at a particular point in time, you just don't want that information because it's too much. It's almost yeah. like someone constantly in your face, oh, do yeah. something, do something, and you're like, yeah. no, enough of this. But you <laughs> went on, you said something about the creativity side and how um, this pandemic has really affected the creativity side. And I, and it's true, because it, I, I was in West End, and West End was so quiet, and I felt, yeah, it, it felt like I missed that. I missed those days where we yeah. had beautiful theatre shows, and they're no longer doing available. You said you're from the creative, you used to be a dancer. How have you adjusted mm -hmm. life since, um, since the pandemic from your creativity side? Yeah, so obviously, like before, I was, I, my creativity definitely came through my dance, and that was how I sort of like to express myself and doing different things like that. And since then, it has been a bit of a, a bit of a shock. And I've been trying to find ways to sort of still address that creative side. And I think I have definitely popped that into more like blogging and creating these like lovely photos. And I've really taken that into food and trying to sort of create that little sort of personal for me that that exciting sort of creativity into Instagram and social media and helping other people through that mm -hmm. and giving some sort of inspiration and something to look at that is positive and helps people go. We've also um, recently done a little video. We made a video for um, To Save the Arts uh, which had over two million views now um so it's it's been uh, yeah it's been, just been trying to like keep keep doing things that really tap into that creative side of me to keep my mental health in the right place and trying to make sure I keep keep that up and trying to just get out and do as much as much creative stuff I can that's not necessarily just sat down on my laptop or just channeling it into different areas of my life whilst that isn't there and certainly even like fitness can can be quite creative in the fact that you create workouts you create playlists for your workouts and really try and find the creativity that way rather than just being stuck at home and in that one room in that tiny flat with with not a lot of not a lot of um, inspiration and positivity out there so yeah definitely just trying to get it into different parts of my life oh that's good 
lockdown has had a huge effect on so many. You've turned mm. lockdown into fitness and I've seen your page, you, you, you know, anyone looking out for an inspiration, not just that you, <laughs> you're fit, <laughs> you're also doing, do, um, you do blogging of different foods and how you make it. What is your top tip as a young lady out there living for people going through lockdown? As you know, you're into the fitness side. Well, what can we do? What kind of exercises would you advise someone to do who's in a tiny flat, no room to move, mm -hmm. but still want to keep fit? And you know, I don't know if you've noticed it gets dark so easily, but you know, like, oh, I know. yeah, outside is dark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go out to do anything and that, that yeah. motivation is absolutely down and for me I have to say one of the discouragement I get is not just does it get dark so easily it's cold it's not as it's not like yeah. when we, lockdown is it's not like lockdown dark. one is it where you can yeah. get outside and, exactly. go and enjoy the lockdown and is out. Out. It was, yeah it was fun but now we're in a different kind of lockdown I don't yeah. it doesn't matter what anyone how everyone sees it we're in a different kind of yeah lockdown. yeah what, we are what, what, Amber, give me your thoughts. <laughs> How can we get through this in your own way? Yeah, I think I think the main thing is to remember that we are all very different. So what works for one person isn't necessarily going to work for the, for the next person. Some people really enjoy working out in the morning. So people get up and they enjoy getting that done first thing in the morning, which personally is I really like doing that. Whereas some people couldn't think of anything worse and they would never want to get out of bed at six o'clock to do a workout. They want to take that extra sleep. And then they come alive in the evening and they enjoy those workouts in the evening. So I think it's, it's things like seeing seeing people on Instagram having posted a workout at 8 a.m. when you're just waking up and you think, oh God, like they've they've been up and done a workout already. That just doesn't work for some people. And that is actually a, a natural process in our body called our circadian rhythm that actually means our sleep process comes slightly different times. So those people who work out in the evenings, their rhythm of their body just works differently to those people that get up early. So definitely remembering that what works for one person isn't gonna work for someone else. Also things like yoga, I absolutely swear by. Even taking five minutes for a little meditation, just having a lie down at any point in the day, if you need to take a few, a few moments of peace for yourself. Mm. And one thing that I absolutely swear by, although it's cold, although it gets dark early, is just getting outside and getting some fresh air. I think a lot of people think that working out needs to be like burpees and dripping with sweat and posting a selfie afterwards to show how hard you've worked. And actually it's just about getting active, getting moving, just keeping your body going and not being sedentary and just sat at a desk, which so many people are at the moment. It's just getting outside, feeling the air on your face and, most people, certainly me, if I've been out for a walk, I always feel better when I come back from it. No matter how tired I am or no matter how down I'm feeling, if I go out, I listen to a nice podcast or pop on some music that I like, or even the radio, which we can now listen to through our phones, which is amazing. And just getting out and really enjoying the nature and outdoors. And, and if you do want to go for a really sweaty workout, that's also great. There's so many, so many platforms out there now of people adapting to the lockdown. And there's so many online workouts and things that we can, we can do. Don't get overwhelmed by that, obviously, but just working what is right for you, I think is my top tip. Yeah. What's a typical workout we could do at home? If now the gyms are closed, what would you say a typical thing we could do? So what the exercise? Um, it's, again it depends it depends if you don't have weights mm -hmm. finding um certain instructors through platforms um that's like the nike training club is a great a great app that i use where you can tell yourself um if you have weights if you don't have weights what sort of workout you'd like to do whether that's low impact or heavier weights or cardio mm -hmm. and you can choose like different workouts from there which i find is super super helpful also if you have um any other people with you that's a great way of trying to get 
into the workout like if you have friends that you want to work out with like my and my mum sometimes FaceTime each other and work out together and just do like even some mobility some stretches and then I might do a little heavier weight session for myself and afterwards but yeah just there's so so many different options we could do yeah yeah because I'm finding that you don't necessarily need the gym to mm. that was my whole fear at first when they said lockout yeah lockout. I was yeah like, me oh, too I was so very no, scared no big weights what do we do how do we do it then yeah I started studying different um different sites and I saw actually there's certain things you could actually do to mm, still maintain your workout and still probably get the same effect yeah the same yeah. Yeah. the same results exactly even there's so many things you can use at home like I know people laugh about using wine bottles and using cans of beans and things like that but even that or using a chair that you can use as a step or a bench or things like that it, there's a lot that we can can do from home and even a lot of people have found that resistance bands have been very they're quite cheap they're quite easy to get hold of just one band can like do so much for your body in the same way that a big resistance weights machine in the gym can do and can have like you said just just as useful effects for the body and the muscles so yeah, there's lots we can do. In, in, in this state of mind where people are all, you know, in that lockdown phase, how would you find resilience in yourself to find that, you know, to find joy and happiness to keep doing what you need to do? Because I, you know, I saw a blog up where you blogged about res resilience and, you know, yeah. our mental state. How can we, how do you define that resilience? And I think um, for me, I really believe in the sort of glass half full glass half empty kind of analogy and just always thinking about things in a slightly different way obviously right now if we focus on the negative things the negative is only going to bubble up and become what's constantly on your mind whereas if you switch slightly the way you think like right now I have lost my passion for the arts but actually I've switched the way I thought about it and said right what can I do to keep myself to keep myself happy and you have to you have to change without dwelling on what the negative side of it is so yes we are in a lockdown right now but what then does that give you as a positive and I find writing stuff down really really helps me every night before I go to sleep I write down what I'm going to achieve the next day I write down what I'm grateful for and I write down the things that I want to do the next day, which gives me a purpose. When I wake up the next morning, I know exactly what I'm gonna do with my day and how I'm gonna fill my time. And it just gives me that sort of, I say added resilience to be like, I'm not gonna sit in bed all day today and like think about what I have lost. And it's just getting up, switching and mad. On my page, you see, I post my porridge all the time. I always post my breakfast. And to some people, porridge looks like a really awful bowl of oats that no one ever wants to eat. Whereas porridge to me is like the most exciting thing in the world, which is crazy. But like that just just switching that mindset to be grateful for what's around us and what we do have is the best way to stay positive and to keep keep being resilient in this horrendous awful time that everyone is going through so yeah wow that's really amazing our final question <laughs> yeah. how do you find you know how do you find joy through your cooking because I've seen you've put a lot of <laughs> it could be random yeah. foods here and there yeah. so how do you find that's joy from that <laughs> <laughs> I actually, so last year, as I mentioned at the beginning, I was away for a whole year working in the Caribbean and I didn't cook for a whole year. Oh. So I had, I had food, I worked on a cruise ship, so I had people making, making food all the time. And since I've been back from that, I absolutely just love cooking and being able to explore with different, different flavours, different things. And one of my lockdown goals, this lockdown is to start attempting more plant-based recipes and sort of using different things that I haven't used before. Mm -hmm. So I just, I just love it. I love it. And I love finding different recipes on Instagram and finding bloggers. And I mean, so many things that I make go terribly, but I still enjoy eating them and just trying and seeing how it goes. So 
yeah just I would if anyone's looking to get into into more cooking and really there's so many things so many ingredients that mm. as Brits we might not have been like exposed to before and being able to explore those and start cooking them and trying something completely different I'd again that's a good way to keep keep giving your day purpose even like right tomorrow I'm gonna make this meal and even just having that just gives you something to look forward to so yeah yeah and I love food so it's (laughs) it's easy (laughs) oh gosh and that's so thank you so much for this conversation I mean we've learned so much from yourself and I really hope this lockdown ends and everyone can find their joy doing what they normally yes, do. I do as well. Thank, you so, Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. It's been lovely to meet you. Thank you.